Hi, I'm Allison Henry. I'm a security analyst with System and Network Security at UC Berkeley. And uh, I'm creating this video to show you how to use Windows encrypting file system, that is EFS, to encrypt data on your drive to protect sensitive data from unauthorized access. So the way this is accomplished is by the use of a key, which uh, the key is used to encrypt and decrypt the file. There's actually two keys with EFS, one that does the encrypting and one that does the decrypting. But um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to show you how Windows stores this key, what type of file it's stored in, and how you can make a backup of this key so that should you not be able to boot your Windows system, you need to get this data back through another system, you'll have the key to be able to decrypt it. So um, to get started, let me show you. This is a Windows XP professional system. It is not part of a domain. So this is a standalone system, not in any kind of active directory. You can use any Windows system to um, follow along and do what I'm doing here. So first we go to the Start menu. And go to Run, and you type cert mgr dot m s c and you open the certificate manager so you go here expand where it says personal and you'll see there's nothing here well let's see what happens when we start to encrypt with the fs so we'll click the minimize button here so on the desktop of the system we're going to make a folder make a new folder just call it thing you want open this folder and we'll create a file just a regular text word pad text document my SSN is whatever kind of sensitive information you have Whatever. This is not true for me, just in case you're wondering, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. All right, so we have our data, and now we want to um, encrypt this with the FS. We're going to set the encryption properties on the folder so that anything that goes in or out of this folder will be encrypted with the properties that we set. Encryption itself happens on a file by file basis. It's not the folder that's encrypted, it's the containing file. But this will allow us to make sure anything in this folder is encrypted. So you get the properties for the folder and you go to advanced, click on advanced, and you'll see there's this option here in the advanced settings for NTFS for encrypt contents to secure data. So we're going to say, okay, let's do that. And then here we click apply. It's going to ask us, make sure, do you want to encrypt everything in this folder? We say, okay. All right, excellent. Now open the folder. You'll notice it's green. This is just a Windows file label, and it uh, automatically labels any encrypted folders with the green uh, text, so you can see that this is an encrypted file. Now you can see that also that I can open and read the data in this file. It says it should be. I'm the one who encrypted it. But let's see what, what, where the key is that lets me read this file. So let's go back to the certificates control here and we'll click refresh and you'll see that now there actually is certificates in here this one called crypt that's the name of the user account that I use to log into this Windows system so this certificate here is what allows me to read this data on any system where the certificate is not in the store for the user that's logged in they won't be able to access the data so you can picture your hard drive fails and you hook up this hard drive to another computer to copy the data off. It's not going to be readable. So what we need to do is make a backup of the certificate that we can copy offline to your normal backup file storage and then restore it to any other system where you might need to get your data back. So this is what we're going to do. We right click on the key, you go to all tasks, and you go to export. All right, and this what we do need to say is yes, export the private key because 
what I said before about there being two keys, one that does the encrypting and one that does the decrypting. But the private key is what allows you to read the data. That's what does the decrypting. So that's what we need to be able to recover the data later. So we say yes, export the private key. Let's click yes there. Now you need a password. Here's the thing is this private key is very sensitive. It lets whoever has the password get into your data. You need to set a strong password for this private key so that you can store it, you know, in your backup server, on a CD-ROM, whatever. It only, when you enter the password, does this key allow you to get access to the data. So we're going to set a password for the key. Now it's really important that you don't forget this password. So there's some different strategies you can use for this. Use something that you're really going to remember, or if you have a secure physical place to lock the copy of this key, you can burn it to a CD-ROM, write the password on the CD-ROM, and lock it up in a safe. Or, you know, put it with your sensitive paper files inside of an envelope that's sealed. Um, just some way so that you can get the password back if you need it, but this key is just not sitting around on a file server unprotected. So we'll go with that, browse to some location, let's just stick it on the desktop so we can find it. My cert for EFS and save. Okay, so we're going to close this up and see that now there's this file on the desktop which is a backup of your key. So I'm going to show you another little demo on why it's so important to have this backup. Okay, so suppose your system administrator comes along to help you out because you forgot your password for Windows and your system administrator logs in and resets your password. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do what a system administrator might do. They go into the uh, administrative tools control panel and the computer management console. So from this console, you expand local users and groups, you go to users, and you see the crypt user. This is the user that I logged into to the system. This is the user that encrypted the data with EFS, and the key belongs to this user. So now I'm going to go into and set this user's password. And you'll see this warning here. And if you've ever wondered what this warning is about when you reset a password in Windows, this is about EFS. You're going to see what happens when I just click proceed and ignore the warning and go ahead and set a new password for this user since they forgot their password. Now this is different than changing your password in Windows. When you change your password, you need to know what the old password was. With a reset, you don't need to know what the old password was. It will re just write over whatever the old password was with the new one. So now we do that. Okay, so let's make sure we can use this new password so we're going to log off and now we're going to log in we're going to log in with the new password excellent so your system administrator helped you out everything's great you go in to get your sensitive file uh oh what happened well, when your system administrator reset your password, it destroyed your EFS key. And the reason why it did that is so that if somebody got their hands on your computer, they could break into an administrator's account. And the idea is just because somebody's an administrator doesn't mean they should just be able to reset your password or whatever they want, log in and see your data. EFS is supposed to give you security outside of the normal Windows user accounts. So this is one level of protection and that if your system administrator's account is broken into, has a weak password, whatever, that can't get into your EFS data provided you have a good password that can't be broken into. So, but the problem is now your EFS certificate is dead and you can't get your data. But fortunately you made your backup. So all you have to do is double click. There's a little wizard that just walks you through. All the defaults are fine here. You enter that password that you did when you exported the certificate. And if you want to be able to export it again to make up another backup at a later time, you have to check this option. Let's click defaults, import successful, and let's see if we can read our file now. No problem. So that's that. And if you want to confirm that your certificate is back where it belongs, 
just open the certificate manager again and there it is. So that's how you back up a certificate with EFS and restore it when you need to get your data back.